Once we finish the design that we want to cut out on the ShopBot or other CNC machine in Fusion 360, we need to create tool paths so the ShopBot or other machine can cut out our plywood and then make our piece of furniture. To do this in Fusion 360, we need to move from the design workspace to the manufacturer workspace. Inside the manufacturer workspace, we have a number of options. The units of my model are in millimeters, but the ShopBot uses inches. So I want to change the units in my manufacturer workspace. I can still work in millimeters in the design workspace, but have the manufacturer workspace set up in inches. Once I've changed my units, I need to make a new setup. I'll click New Setup. I don't need to worry about machine for this particular operation. I want it to be milling. And then for the model, I can click on the pieces of the model. And then that will be what Fusion makes the tool paths for. For the orientation, I need to make sure that the Z axis is up. If it isn't, I can select the Z axis. So click on any of the top planes. And then I can pick which axis I want the X to be. In this case, I want it to be this line over here. Then I need to pick the stock box point. I want that to be in the lower left for the shop bot. So I'll click this, I'll zoom in, and I wanna make sure I click this top dot. This looks exactly like the shop bot, lower left corner. Then I need to set the size of the stock. Fusion automatically sets a relative box size. That's the yellow section here, but I'm going to be using a larger piece of plywood, so I wanna set that up. I'll click on the stock tab, and I'll change the mode from relative size to fixed box size. The width for my plywood is 48 inches, and the depth is 48 inches. And the height is 19.05 millimeters. I can also measure this in inches, but I can put in a millimeter value as well. I'll press OK. Notice that my stock, represented as yellow, is a different place as my virtual plywood. Fusion defaults to centering the workpiece inside the stock. Sometimes this is desirable because then it automatically centers and gives you the best buffer around your piece. But sometimes we don't want to have it in the middle of the box, so we can change that. If I want it to be the same as this piece, I need to measure. So I can use the inspect tool to measure from this path to this path, and that'll give me a distance of 1.182 inches. Then if I inspect over here, I can click this path and this path, and it gives me that dimension, which is 1.322 inches. Then I can edit my setup after closing the measure dialog. Right click on setup and edit. Then on stock for width X model position, I can offset from the left side. And what is my offset? It's going to be 1.322. Then I can do the same thing for the Y direction, and the Y direction will be what we measured, 1.182. So now my stock exactly matches what my virtual stock is. This is not necessary, but if you want to set up something other than the center box, this is how you do it, by measuring where it is and then offsetting from the X and Y values. Now our setup is complete, so we need to make two operations. For this particular piece of furniture, I need to make a non-through cut or a pocket cut here. And then I need to make through cuts or profile cuts all around the pieces. Normally we do the pocket cuts first. So I'm going to go up to 2D and make a new 2D pocket. We're going to select a tool. The tool will be this quarter inch flat end mill from Whiteside. You can see a video linked in the description on how to set up this tool. I'll select the tool. That will automatically bring in all my feeds and speeds, so I don't need to worry about this. I'll click on the Geometry tab. For the pocket selection, I want to make sure I select the face that's at the lower end of the pocket. I could also select this profile, so either one will give me the same result. Then I'll click on Heights. And for a pocket cut, we want all the heights to remain at their default values. On Passes, my tolerance of 0 0.004 is fine. You can also change this to 0.1 if you have a particular need for tighter tolerances, but you don't need anything more than that for wood. We, we don't want any stock to leave. We can change this to a negative value if your parts are fitting too tight. We do want to click on multiple depths. We want the maximum roughing step down to be 0.125 inches since we're using a quarter inch bit. 
That way it'll only step down half the diameter of the bit. We don't need to change the finishing step down unless we're doing finishing operations because we have that set at zero. And then we can click use even step downs. We wanna click on smoothing and we wanna make sure that we change this value to be equal or greater than what we have up here. And also we want to change this maximum step over to only three decimal places. This will help speed up the shop bot. Then we'll click OK. Notice that we have this spiral helix. This can be very time consuming. So if you see this, you want to edit your setup and make sure on the linking pass, we change the ramp type from helix to plunge. For wood, it's very simple to just plunge in. For other operations and materials, you may need to use a helix. And then we'll press OK. And now notice that our bit goes straight down into the material. So now we have our pocket clearing operation set up. We need to cut out the contours. So we'll create one more operation, and it'll be 2D contour. It automatically selects the tool. We have our quarter inch end mill selected. Then we'll click on geometry. Now it's important that we click in the right spot on the geometry. We wanna make sure we click the lower edge of the geometry. So I'll click this one, then this one, then this one. Notice that they're all on the lower edge. Then we gotta click this tab button. What this does is adds tabs so the pieces don't fly away when they're being cut by the router, which would be very dangerous on the shop bot. For tab shape, I recommend using triangular because it's easier to cut away. Tab width, a quarter inch is fine. Tab height, we wanna make it a little bit taller so it's nice and sturdy. So we'll say 0.25 inches. You can do tab positioning by distance. Sometimes this works out great, but you notice that there's many, many, many tabs. So we can raise this distance up and you may find something that's acceptable to you. If you can't find the right distance that's working, you can also select at points. So now I can manually select where I want my tabs. I probably want one there and a minimum of here and here. Each of these pieces probably only needs three tabs. And I probably only need three tabs on this piece. If I accidentally click here and add a tab I don't need, hold down the shift key, then click and it'll remove the tab. Then we wanna to go to the heights tab. On heights, everything is fine except for the bottom height. This is in a perfect world, everything is fine, but wood has different thicknesses and values, so we wanna change this offset from the selected contours to go down negative 0.02 inches. We can always adjust this more if we find that we're not going through all the way or our table is not perfectly flat. Then we click on the passes tab. Here, Fusion will set the tolerance way too high and it will make our shop bot go very slow. So what we want to do is change this to 0 0.001. Then we can select multiple depths, and we need to change these values as well. We need to make the maximum roughing step down be 0.125 inches. Remember, that's an eighth of an inch, and we're using a quarter inch bit. We don't have any finishing step downs, so we should not need to change this value. If you want to change the value, you can leave it at 0.125. We can uncheck rough final. And then we want to make sure that order by islands is checked right here because we want to cut out each pass. We want to cut out each part on its own before moving to the next part. This makes our machine time go faster. We don't need to leave any stock, but if you wanted to leave extra stock so you could sand it down to a certain size, that's fine. Uh, but in this case, we don't want to leave any stock. You can also go to a negative value, so you're cutting away a bit more material to make your pieces fit together better. We'll click on smoothing, and smoothing needs to be either equal to our tolerance, which is 0 0.001 or a thousandth of an inch, or it can be a multiple of four. You can add the tolerance to be 0 0.004, and for wood, you're probably going to get just a fine result. Then we'll go to linking. We want to keep preserve rapid movement. And the safe distance, we can change this to be only three decimal places. This will help speed up the shop bot. We don't need a ramp for our plywood, and we can press OK. Now we have both of our tool paths, and we want to actually see what happens. We can turn off the eyeball for the model in our browser. We can click the top level setup, then right click and simulate. If we press play, 
it's going to start cutting out our operation. We can speed up the playback by moving this slider to the right. Then we can see that it's going to cut out one piece at a time. And if you want to see the entire operation complete, we can click this button on the right and it'll go through everything. Then you can inspect to see how everything works. Here we can see our triangular tabs and everything is cut through. I'm going to close this. Another thing that we want to do is click on our tool paths and look directly from the side. So click on your view cube and pick one of the orthographic views. And we wanna make sure this pocket is not going through the bottom. So I don't see any blue lines here. So that means I'm not going all the way through. If I click on the contour, you'll see that I go very slightly through. This is 0.02 inches down. So I'm going through the material into the spoil board just a little bit. So you can always check this. What you're looking for is if I accidentally had too far of a height down. So if I go down negative one inch and I say, okay, we're gonna see that this goes way too far. We wanna check this in the computer to make sure there's nothing going wrong with our passes before we actually go to the shop bot and cut out our part. So if you see anything going below your stock or above your stock too far, that's a problem and we need to double check our heights. So I'm gonna right click edit and put that back to a reasonable value. And so now if I zoom in, I only see it going a little bit past my stock and into the spoil board. Now that everything is completed, I can right click on the setup and we wanna make sure that we're clicking the top setup, not an individual tool path. I'll right click and post process. I'll pick the ShopBot open SBP. Don't pick the ISO, we want this one right here. We don't need to change anything in the properties. It's fine as is. And then we can press OK. And we need to pick a spot to save it on our computer. It'll default to saving it in this NC file. We can go ahead and save it on our desktop or in our downloads folder. You want to label it as something that you know what's happening. So I can label this as hex stool one quarter inch bit. So I've labeled this all the information that I needed. So I have my plywood is 48 by 48. I have my 1905 millimeter plywood and a quarter inch bit. This is just gives you a double check. So when you are working at the shop bot, you kind of know what your files are rather than just having simple numbers. The file naming convention is up to you. Once I've saved that, I can take that file, put it on a USB drive and take it to the machine that's controlling the shop bot. Now I have tool paths created from Fusion 360 for my plywood furniture to use on the ShopBot. This is a look at how the Properties tab of the Post Processes looks on Windows. It's all the same information, just the toggles are yes and no switches rather than these checkboxes. Since we don't need to change anything for this post process, we just need to save the file. The only thing you want to make sure is that you have the right file extension. Sometimes Fusion does not add the extension automatically. You want to make sure that the files you save are .sbp. Now let's cut out all kinds of CNC plywood furniture on the shop bot.